Hello guys, I'm coming back. Um, it's I don't know why, but 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 it seems like the 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 quality of today's internet is heavily affected by the raining days. So now I'm back, and hopefully you can you can now see my my live streaming. Oh, it's still stuck. Um. Yeah, someone is asking what's going on. I have no idea what's going on. Okay. All right. I think it's. I think it's good now. Oh my god! I. I so if you refresh. If you refresh, um, <clears throat> you refresh the page, and then you will, you know, you will see um, everything very clearly. So some of the student is asking how to interpret the the odds ratio. So um, what I'm planning to do is just to, uh, well, let me show it here. Uh, to have a logistic regression question here, and trying to. And try to help you guys uh, understand. Oh, it's stuck again. What's wrong? Okay. So now let's look at this question. Um, it it's it it says that a mortgage broker would like to use a logistic regression. An analysis to predict the probability of default of a new home loan application launched by a single applicant. Based on the data available in the company's database, he identifies three main factors, which are X1, annual gross income, X2, age, uh, X3, the gender, X4, the loan for investor property, X5, net assets. So, so this is, should be five, right? It's not three. Okay. Oh, well, it's five. And uh, most likely, your question will directly tell you after fitting a logistic regression model to the data, he obtains the following logistic regression coefficient. So it will tell tell you the coefficients directly, and uh, because Excel cannot do this kind of uh, logistic regression. So firstly, write down the estimated logistic regression equation. Okay logistic regression equation so what should we do very easy it's just um let me find a blend paper this is pretty straightforward write down the estimated log re logistic regression equation what we need to do is to write down log of r hat which is uh which is the log of the odds ratio uh, equal to um then 1.2 plus uh, so this is minus 0 0.032 x1 minus 0 0.05 x2 uh, plus uh, 0 0.25 x3 uh, plus um, uh, 1.2 x4 and minus 0 0.01 x5 so this is just the answer to the first question write down the estimated logistic regression equation okay and for question two it is saying the broker is reviewing application from okay 30 year old male applicant eight earns 84,000 uh, sorry 82,000 per year net asset of 60,000 this man want to buy a house predict the probability of default of this application so it's um Again, for prediction, right? Uh, so this is question one. Question two is for prediction. So the so predict the probability of default. So for the probability default, we should first calculate the log of the R hat first. <clears throat> so it's going to be 1.2 minus. So X1 is the an annual gross income in thousands of dollars. So income is 82. I, we need to plug in 82 here. 
and minus 0.05 times x2 is the age of the applicant in years 30 year old times 30 and plus 0 0.25 x3 x3 here is the gender gender is 0 for male so it should be times 0 and plus um, 1.2 x4 x4 is loans for investment property yes or no is for a house so it's investment for property so one is for yes so 1.2 times one and finally minus 0 0.01 of its uh, net asset so net asset should be in thousand dollars as well so you need to plug in 60 here so uh, today since I'm in my home so I've got my <laughs> calculator <laughs> All right, let's calculate this result together. 1.2 minus 0 0.032 times A2 minus 0 0.05 times 30 plus 0 0.25 uh, times 0 plus 1.2 times 1 minus 0 0.01 times 60. So the log of odds finally becomes minus 2.324. All right, so um, after we calculate the log of r hat, we can finally calculate r hat, r hat, which is the odds ratio. So odds ratio then becomes e to the power of 2.324. Hopefully you all remember this from your high school, right? Uh, so e to the power of, uh, where is e? E, 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 e. Uh, it's here. e to the power of minus um, 2.324. And we've got 0 0.09788, something like this. And this question is asking, find out the probability. So the probability, p hat, is simply r hat divided by 1 plus r hat, which is uh, 0 0.98 divided by 1 plus that answer number, right? So it's finally becomes zero point. It's zero point zero eight nine one five. Therefore, the probability of this guy commits uh, commit, committing a default is zero point eight nine uh, zero point zero eight nine one five. So well, why why do you say hello? Uh, if you cannot see this video like clearly, just refresh the page and uh, it's going to be fine. Okay, so uh, this is about question two. Question three. According to the company's guideline, a loan application will be successful if the predicted probability of default is less than 10%. So the threshold is 10%. So what will this man application be successful? Yes, it is because uh, the the probability is zero point zero eight nine one five of default, which is less than ten percent. So, this application will be successful. Now, interpret the odds ratio of this application. All right. So one one student is asking how to interpret the odds ratio of this application. So one thing I wanna. So you, you, you only need to interpret it uh, directly because you see, r hat is, uh, I mean, this is not the part of the solution, okay? We know r hat equal to p hat divided by one minus p hat. p hat is the probability of default and minus, one minus p hat is the probability of not default. Therefore, the r hat or the odds ratio can be can be interpreted as the probability of default divided by or over the probability of not being default. And the result is 0 0.09788. So this is how you, um, how you interpret odds ratio, okay? So for the logistic regression question, they are very easy, right? 
uh, you don't need to worry that much because all the output will be given. It's all about prediction. The only hard part is that you need to know when you write down the logistic regression function on the left hand side, it should be what? the log of r hat instead of, we usually take y hat over there, right? So log of r hat instead of y hat. So log of r hat, r hat is odds ratio, and it's, it's, uh, it's calculated by the probability over the probability of default. And since the, now recently it's, it's World Cup, right? So you will see a lot of odds uh, when you you know make some predictions and back some of your monies you know and especially for those of you who bet korean in yesterday's game uh you earn a lot of money right especially two over zero okay whatever uh yeah it's really sad that german it's it's beaten by by korea but yeah that's life okay um <clears throat> all right uh, so let's look at another uh, question. Someone is asking, is there any um, solutions to 2012 paper? My answer is probably no. <laughs> uh, let me check if I got any solutions because uh, I don't remember if there is any solutions. And I don't think all of the questions are really relevant to what we have uh, for this semester, so that's why. Uh, let me find solutions. Solutions for 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 for. Um. Okay. Uh, I can't find it anywhere. Sorry about that. So we don't have any solutions for that. So Clary Huang is asking, dear, oh, so why, why are you, the dear is in bold? Dear Tony, I saw the solution of our tutorial questions about test validity of model include the beta zero while the overall significant excluded. So when do we exclude, include beta zero in H zero? Thanks. So for overall significance test, well, that's a good question. For overall significance test, uh, it's actually testing beta one, uh, all the coefficients on the independent variables e equal zero or not. Beta three equal, equal beta k equal zero. But for individual, you can test any coefficients, including beta zero, beta one, beta three. Okay, so uh, that's the difference. So in the overall, you do not include beta zero, but for the for the individual, you can test on the on the beta zero coefficients, right? Okay. Gao Zixiao is asking, "Hum, hello." So, what what's your question? Well, Lydia Yang is asking from question two C in the two thousand twelve semester two paper, the before after question. Why is it a one tail test? It only has to verify the efficiency of the program but not something like P1 is greater than P2. Okay, so efficiency of the program means after must be greater than before, right? So, or less than before. Well, I didn't read it, but let me see. Um, it seems like it's a match paired question, right? Uh, so if it's a match paired question, um, question, um, where is it? To see, okay, MBA units recruited. Okay, a score sheet. All right, so the efficiency uh, we are caring about if the uh, the efficiency has been improved or not, right? So um, you know what I mean. Uh, it's a one tail test because it's after greater than before. Okay, so it's a one tail test. Randy Neuron is asking, can you upload the final exam sample? I couldn't find it on Canvas last night. Um, well, I think. Uh, the sample, let me have a check. Um, 
it's just in your mid semester exam, I think. So, uh, let's see. No. Um. Announcement. I think it's in the announcement. Someone told me about it, uh, before. Okay, there is an important announcement regarding the mid-semester exam information, and yeah, in that announcement, uh, there is a sample of the exam paper. So you by clicking on that sample, you can find it. Okay, it's under in Canvas under the announcement tab, and that announcement is uh it has been made on April the ninth. So I can show you that announcement. It's just here important announcement regarding mid-semester exam. And here is the sample, and this sample question will be very similar to, uh, uh, not very similar, but it's relevant to the uh, to the final exam. Okay. All right. So, any other questions? Let's see. Uh. Jennifer Ma is asking, "Hi Tony, can we use different color in our cheat cheat sheet?" Yes, you can, as long as they're written. Okay. Jun Xu Ling is saying, "No sound, uh, no sound. Just refresh, refresh the page, and you can get a sound." It only has a midterm example in the yes, it is, but it's just it's also for for final. I mean, uh, many questions. Uh, are related to what we learned after mid semester exam. So it's the final exam sample is the same as a mid semester exam sample. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions? Oh come on. <laughs> So if you don't have any question, I'll I'll find I'll try to find the two thousand twelve, uh paper uh our solution okay and you think of any questions you have or you encountered in your revision. Hmm. Oh my God! It seems like I don't have the solution. I do apologize for that. Okay, someone is asking. Hi, Tony. Do we need to calculate the Pearson test of Spearman? Um, I think you know the test and know how to interpret the result is enough. Okay. Um. Ren Newren is asking, "Do we need to calculate the Pearson and uh, or is it given?" Okay, yeah, I think most likely it it's gonna be given, or at least they they they're gonna be give you like S X X S X Y or S Y uh S something Y Y something like that, but. Uh, trust me. The question, the, the exam is mainly focusing on your understanding of everything instead of, like calculation, like like complex calculations. Okay. 
Yes, the cheat sheet must be handwritten, and uh, I think uh, who, I think someone has asked this question on ED. So if you check ED regularly, you will see this question uh, for the feedback project and the lecture. Examine content. Oh, look. Oh, that, that should be good news. Ming says, hi, please read the units outline again. Uh, I'm not sure where in the units outline says that the final exam just covers the content after hypothesis testing. Really? Oh, I'm not sure where. Okay. Well, then it's probably no. Uh, well, let's see. Final exam written. Oh, okay, yeah, cheat sheet. Okay, so someone is saying like this. Uh, look, Ming is saying, Hi, Bella, thanks for bringing this up. The instruction handwritten and or type notes might cause confusion. This was one of the pre-designed categories in the computer system that I couldn't change when sending information to the exam office, but further instruction that only handwritten is allowed has been given to the invigilators on that day. Okay, so handwritten and or typed notes means it's it falls into this category. It's handwritten and or typed notes. So our category is handwritten or typed notes, but excluded the typed notes. So only handwritten is allowed. And the invigilators will, will also only accept the handwritten notes on that day. Okay. All right, let's see if there is any other questions. Okay, oh my God, suddenly it, it has so many questions. Uh, uh, Parado Z, could you explain should we convert a percentage term to decimal term in calculation since one logistic regression question in two thousand semester one sample give two different answers if I use different terms? What do you mean? Um, can you can you show me that question, uh, pa Pedro Z, if you can, okay? Like you can post it on ED, and I will look look on it, okay? Uh, but. But for percentage term, you if, uh, it depends on. Uh, I think even though I haven't seen the question, but one thing I'm sure is that. If the question, uh, I mean, it it totally depends on the unit, okay? If the unit is percentage return, then you need to turn all the percentage into the decimal term, right? But uh, if it's just, it doesn't say anything, it's just return, and then you need, you need to just use whatever, okay, return. Study King is asking, can you differentiate what SSX, SOY, SXY are? Okay, they are just some squares. SXX is just the sum of X minus X bar square. And uh, SYY is sum of Y, I minus Y bar, uh, sorry, Y bar square. And SXY is the sum of X minus X bar times Y minus Y bar. So those are the only differences. Uh, not differences, but those are the calculation formulas for, for, for those bad boys, okay? Felisa Zen is asking uh, if uh, the given, uh, if uh, given the correlation table to interpret the multicollinearity, uh, do we ignore the Y column since the multi column look at the related? Yes, yes, that's good. Yeah, Felisa Zen, you are right. We are calculating for confidence prediction interval. Will be given the mean of x. Uh, I mean, uh, I think the mean of uh, if there is a question about confidence prediction interval, 
it doesn't matter if you are given X or uh, X bar or not because I mean it's impossible to give you the raw data so X bar it will be 99 percent to be given okay so don't worry so do we need to calculate prediction interval come on I know uh, well I can say do we need to do you need to calculate but from my experience um, the probability of having prediction interval calculation is very rare because you know it's a very complex calculation but everything is impossible so i i can't say you don't need to calculate it okay it's okay but it, you just put an extra formula in your cheat sheet right so it doesn't matter uh randy Nuren. oh why is it so noisy outside how i need to close the door firmly So it seems like all my roommates have just finished their exam. So they, they're just happy and outside. Uh, okay, Randy Nuren for will Clawson match pair sun rank sum test, one total test, y alpha be divided by two. Um, what? One tail test, alpha divided by two. Can you show me the example where alpha is divided by two? Um, okay, hurry. Hari Hamam is asking what is step five? Okay, yeah, I forgot to introduce step five yesterday. So step five is very easy. It's just uh it's just a testing on uh the um what is it? Uh the, the, the assumptions, okay. So we need to know all the assumptions of uh of the linear regression model and knowing how to test it. That's what we learned in week thirteen, and they are not that hard, right? So the assumptions first: normally distributed, the error term normally distributed, constant variance, which is homoscedasticity, and thirdly, uh, no no correlation, right? No correlation between error terms. And lastly, um, no multicollinearity, right? Multicollinearity. All right. So that's all the assumptions, and you need to be able to test the assumptions, because otherwise, if the any of the assumptions is not hold, not held, you will cause a biased estimation or biased prediction. So Daniel Maslak is asking Tony, when would we need the five steps for the uh, hard refer to? What kind of question would that be? I mean, those steps is just for me, for, for, for you to have a whole picture of everything. So uh, to organize, you know, it's a whole picture to organize all the knowledge you learn about regression analysis. So it's it won't be tested directly, but, um, you know, yeah. Uh, it's just a way to memorize everything to, or to understand everything. Dan Yang Li is asking why the population covariance. Well, come on, guys. SXY is the sum of square, right? And no matter SXX or XXY, they are just sum of squares. So sum of square divided by freedom is variance or covariance, okay? So for example, this is SSX which is XI minus X bar square. So if we want to get the, the variance of X, or just the variance of x, it's it should be n minus one, a uh, one over n minus one times x one x bar square. Is that right? And the same for x x y. For x x y, it's uh, x i minus x bar times y i minus y bar. So uh, for for your question, if you divide this number by n minus one, then it's pop uh, it's sample uh, covariance. If you divide it by n, it's sample uh, it's population covariance. Okay. Uh, what else? YH is asking, hi Tony, how to calculate assessing confidence interval and prediction interval formulas in multiple regression model? Well, yeah, it's here. Uh. This is X bar, so they will they will give you X bar and give you all X observations. So that's why I say it's quite impossible to to have you calculate S X X because you need to have all the data of X. Like this is X, 
and they give you at 6, 10, 8, 14, something, and then you just calculate the sum of squares, okay? Um, so that's why it's quite impossible to have you calculate this. Ha 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 ha, Anderson Liu, why do you ha 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 ha? Uh, do we have to calculate the probability of type 2 error? Uh, yeah, that, that's also possible, uh, but I think it, it won't be that uh hard because but but you know what i've got a link for all of you to know how to calculate the power or the the or power of the test or beta and uh, i believe this video uh, can teach much better than i do so i'll share you the link to this video here video for calculating beta and the power of the test oh yeah can you see the link um study king can you see the link for a video calculating beta and the power of the test so you click on that video it's very clear how to calculate beta okay why h is asking is the estimate of p in proportional hypothesis testing use population p instead because in other calculations such as confidence we observe p yeah why h that is a fabulous question uh, this question confused me a lot when I was a student. So now I can share you with share with you some of my experience in the proportion stuff. Okay, so for example, let's take a two population proportion x example. If we want to construct a uh, a um, uh, if for example, if we want to estimate p one minus p two, we know this. Uh, we use p one hat minus p2 hat in order to uh to um to um estimate it right this is the point estimator oh my god i'm so thirsty uh, i'll drink some water and go back in one minute okay Hello everybody, I'm back. Okay, uh, so uh, let's go back. So P1 hat minus P2 hat is just the point estimate of P1 minus P2, right? So this bad boy follows a normal distribution according to central limit theorem. Uh, if np greater than 5 and np1, n1, p1, n1, p1 minus p1 greater than 5, n2, p2 greater than 5, n2, 1 minus p2 greater than 5. So under this condition, p1 hat and p2 hat follows a normal distribution with the mean of p1 minus p2 and a variance of uh, p1 times 1 minus p1 divided by n1 plus uh, p2 times 1 minus p2 divided by n2. So this is just um, the sum of their variances because they are independent to each other, right? Okay, so since so for the confidence interval estimation, it should be the point estimator plus or minus the z half an alpha, which is the critical value, times the standard error. So the standard error is just the square root of this bad boy, right? Square root of p1, 1 minus p1 over n1 plus p2, 1 minus p2 over n2. However, we can see here, p1 and p2 are unknown, right? Because they are population parameters. That's why we need to use p1 hat here and p2 hat here instead, okay? We have no other choice but to use p1 hat and p2 hat. However, for hypothesis testing, things becomes different. Why is that? Let's see. So for example, we, if we are gonna testing p1 minus p2 equal to some p0 okay and uh, alternative hypothesis is uh, p1 uh, minus p2 uh, greater than or not equal to p0 whatever okay well actually one population is still different from two populations okay well let's cover the two population first and then go back to the one population one okay so 
In this way, the test statistic should be given by the P1 hat minus P2 hat minus P1 minus P2, which is P0, and then divided by the square root of, uh, which is just uh, the standard error, right? However, again, in this case, we do not know the exact value of P1 or P2. So that's why we still need to use the P1 hat times 1 minus P1 hat here divided by N1 plus P2 hat times 1 minus P2 hat divided by N2, okay? And this guy follows a, oh, it should be Z, not T, uh, follows a normal distribution 0, 1, okay? Approximately. Okay, so that's about the two sample, uh, two population hypothesis testing. However, a special case is that if we, as we the null hypothesis is P1 minus P2 equals zero, and the alternative hypothesis is P1 minus P2 not equal zero or greater than zero or less than zero, whatever. Now, then, the test statistic Z hereby becomes P1 hat minus P2 hat minus zero, right? Because P1 minus P2 is zero. Uh, and then divided by, now you need to pay attention because we know under now hypothesis to hair hat here, instead we use a p hat, and later on I'll tell you p, how to calculate p hat, and then divide uh, times n1, uh, 1 over n1, 1 over n2. Okay, so how do we get, uh, so this guy just follow a normal, normal approximately. Uh, okay, so for this p hat, um, it's actually calculated by x1 plus x2 over n1 plus n2. So x1, x2 is just the number of succeed in both sample 1 and sample 2, and n1, n2 is just a sample size, okay? So we know p1 hat is x1 over n1, p2 hat is x2 over n2, is that right? So the p hat that we need to use here is x1 plus x2 divided by n1 plus n2. So that's different from uh, any specific value in the difference in the proportion, okay? So uh, you need to keep in mind, okay? So they are different. All right, the next thing is um, that, okay, uh, yeah, this is for the one popula uh, two populations, right? Now let's go back to the single population. So for single population, if we wanna estimate P, we know the point estimator is P hat, which follows if N P greater than five, N times one minus P greater than five, then P hat must follow a normal distribution with the mean of P and variance of P times one minus P divided by N. So uh, on, the other, on the other side of this paper, our P one minus P two is just the sum of the two variances, right? So variance is just a sum of the two variances. Okay, therefore for confidence interval now, it's calculated by p hat plus or minus z half an alpha times uh, the square root of this uh, variance, which is the standard error, right? So this is the standard error. However, we do not have any idea about the value of p, so we can only use p hat instead. But if it is hypothesis testing, for example, P equal to P0 and uh, alternative is P not equal to P0 greater or less than P0, then what we need to do is that we construct a uh, confidence interval and use P hat minus this P0, the hypothesized P, and then let's see divided by Again, it's standard error, right? So the standard error is P1 minus P divided by N. However, in this time, we do assume uh, the null hypothesis is correct by knowing P equal to P0. Therefore, uh, here, instead of using P hat, we need to use this hypothesized proportion, okay? Which is the P0 over here. Am I happy with that? Good. Okay, so that's the only difference between um, the estimation of uh, P and the hypothesis testing on P, okay? All right, uh, thank you for a question, YH. And let's look at the next one. Feliza Zen is asking, is the same data is given if different equations model use? Is it true that SST will be the same while well, SSR and SSU will change? Exactly. So, 
this is what I usually to 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 you know to simulate what is SST, SSR, and SSE. So for example, this is SST, the total variation in Y. It will be fixed once your data set is this this determined, right? Because if you get those Y data, and then SST will be the same, always the same. Now the only difference is the distribution, uh, not distribution, but allocation in SSR and SSE. So uh, SSR plus SSE equal SST. So when we increase the number of independent variable, what will happen? The SSR will increase, right? At the same time, SSE will decrease, okay? So that's the relationship between SSR and SSE. So this is when we increase the number of independent variable. Uh, independent variable because uh, the more independent variable we have the more variation in why can we explain right can the model explain okay why H is asking hi Tony I just asked a question about the calculation about the SXX so the point is how to calculate a multiple linear regression model because there are more than one just independent variables in model well have you noticed that um, have you noticed that the the prediction interval uh, is simply it's only for simple linear regression model which only has one x okay for multiple regression model have you noticed that you didn't learn prediction interval and confidence interval formula okay so you haven't learned that so Mary Annie Naylor is asking to calculate the coefficient of x. I have seen two different formulas. One is beta one s x s x, and beta one equal to s x squared. Wouldn't this give two different solutions? Okay. Um. Well, they are basically the same thing. <laughs> I mean, they are talking about the same thing. Uh, because sometimes s x x is uh it's it's uh, uh, we define sxx as x minus x bar square but sometimes we define this as sx square so they are the same thing okay they are just different you know they are just a different uh uh you know what is it they are just different uh notations okay so they will sp specify what they have defined, okay? All right, any other questions? Any other questions, guys? Yeah, I know, well, I know s x squared can be the variance of uh, x, but under that condition, under Mary's condition, uh, sometimes they just um, you know define s x squared as this bad boy. So that's why it's con very confusing because in Cubus five thousand two we use s x squared as this sum of square. Uh, but in Cubus 5001, we use SXX here, okay? So they are just different notations, okay? So in the question, they will specify what is sample variance or, or whatever, so you don't need to worry that much, okay? Why H is asking, okay, anyway, I saw a question about is that the calculation of multiple linear regression in past exam, probably it's plausible to get some sort of value using Excel, but anyway, it's good to know cheese. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, I, I know, yeah. It's probably um, SX calculation. I mean, for SX calculation, it's it can only calculate one independent variable. So for in, in multiple linear regression, we must have many, many SXX, okay? We have uh, like x axis one for the first one, x axis two for the second one, x axis three for the third one, something like that. Okay, 
So Mary、uh, Annie Naylor is asking. Okay, thank you. It's just using sample variance instead of SX, but we'll fix now. Yeah, you just no. Uh, no matter what kind of notation it is, uh, you just know on the denominator it's, it's the sum of squares, and then that's fine. Okay, actually, uh, the coefficients or any kind of correlation coefficients, it can be calculated by S X Y divided by, for example, S X X. Um. Or, it can be calculated by the covariance of X and Y divided by the variance of X. Okay. So, uh, that's because if you divide here by n minus one, you get the covariance, and divide by n minus one here, you get the variance, right? So they are basically the same thing. So the beta, the beta one, can be calculated by this kind of stuff. Okay, any of them. Um. Felisa then is asking if it's more than zero point nine five. The very likely chance of multicollinearity more than zero point nine is positive. So zero point nine say there's no problem. Yes, you can. Y H is asking: Is it true that no matter for reduced mode or full mode SST is fixed, the only difference is the proportion of SSI and SST re respected. You mean SSR and SSE, right? Yes, it is. SST is always the fixed, so the only difference is in SSR and SSE proportions. Okay, so in the reduced model. We will have less SSR, right? But in the full model, we will have more SSR. Then correspondingly, full model less SSE, reduced model more SSE. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Okay, if you don't have any other questions, then、uh, what about we just、uh, call it a day? Is that okay? I'll wait for another three minutes for more questions. Okay. And if you are、uh, you just want to have a sleep, just safe to leave. Okay. Hmm. -hmm. Well, while I was waiting for more、uh, more questions, let me just、mm, no, no, I can't. Oh, I just want to order some、uh, Uber Eats because I'm so 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 hungry. Still haven't had my my dinner yet. Um, that's not a good habit to have such late dinner, but.、Uh, Oh, and Anderson Liu is asking. Actually, for prediction interval and confidence, I just try to understand, but no more calculation. Do you think we should pay more attention to calculation? Um, I mean, if you can, just do it, right? I mean, it's just plug in the numbers, right? Uh, I, I, I think,、uh, although I can't remember the 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 interval, but it's just y hat plus or minus uh some t. Half an alpha, n minus two, uh, for simple linear regression, right? And times the standard error, and then times adjustment on the standard error. So for prediction, it's uh for confidence interval is one over n one plus I think it's something like x i minus x uh bar divided by some s X X, I guess so, but for the prediction interval, 
uh, here on the square root it's one plus one over n plus like uh, the same thing x y minus uh, by s x x something like that I can't remember but look the calculation is not hard right so just do it so Kelly Wang why do you always have your dinner so late I mean yeah uh, I just wanted to keep fit okay <laughs> Rennie Chen is asking if we are asked to write the estimated model do we need to fit in the number or just write the equation with hat Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good question. If it's an estimated equation, you need to write down the outputs. I mean, all the beta zero hats value instead of a beta zero hat over there. Okay, uh, just like what we done in this uh, in this question, like this question, if we asked to estimate logistic regression equation. Uh, what we did was to actually uh, where is it? Where is it? Okay, just write down y hat. Oh, uh, not y hat, but ln r hat equal. Uh, all the values times the, the x, okay? And Felisa Zen is asking, can you remind us which tests are always two-tailed? No chance of being one-tailed? Oh, come on, that, that's, a, uh, that's a good summary. Um, let me think, two tails. So one of the two tail is uh, for example, um, chi-square test for normality, I believe uh, the chi-square test for normality is, oh my god, it's one tail to the, oh, it's one tail, yeah, chi-square is one tail. Okay, so, so for those who are two tail tests, the F test for for equality of variance is two tailed, okay. But the F test for overall significance is one tailed. Also, the ANOVA F test is one tailed. All right. Anything else? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, well, I have an urgent email to reply. Let me th let me see. Okay. Okay, no problem, no urgent. Uh, yeah, anything else? Uh, so so if we did ask for the model, we don't write the numbers, but just a coefficient beta x. We ask for equation, then we fit the numbers in, right? Yes, for if it's asking the model, uh, we just write down the model and uh, something and plus epsilon, like beta zero, beta one x one. But if it is as estimated, okay, it's not only about equation, but the estimated model or estimated equation, we just fit in the number. So YH, how to tell if the right tail, left tail will cost and run some tests? Here's a simple question. A is this and B is this. It's asking to rank the value of the test statistic for a right tail will cost and run some test. So for right, right tail, it's let's see a is 12 14 15 and b is 11 13 16 16 17 19 20. okay let's take this question as an example uh for right tail i think we need to use the greater i mean uh, this is assigned or okay we'll talk some run some tests okay let's uh <clears throat> Let's sum all those t's together. So for t a and t b, we need to rank all those data from 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 2 16, and 17, 19, 20. So uh, firstly, we, do we need to rank from the smallest to the largest or largest to smallest? To smallest to largest, is that right? Okay, so this is one, two, three, four, five, and this is six, seven, so it's 
six point five, and seventeen is a six seven eight nine ten. So for um, for this one we got two. Fourteen, fifteen. We got four, and five, and the B. It's eleven. One, three, uh, six point five, six point five, and seventeen, eight, nine, ten. All right, good. So for right tail test, uh, what we're gonna do is <clears throat> the rank value of right tail test. Should be something like the location of A minus the location of B, uh, whether it is greater than zero, right? So what we need to consider should be uh the rank of A, I guess. So it's two plus four, eight, eight plus five, thirteen. So it should be thirteen, isn't it? Is the answer thirteen or the 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 uh, sum here? So can you tell me what is the solution? Is it thirteen? Okay, Felisa Zen, if given Excel output of p-value, it doesn't clarify if the p-value is 1 till 2 tail, for example, crucial Wallace output, should we just leave the p-value as it is or multiply by uh, or multiply by 2? Okay, well, um, if it is a p-value, it's just a p-value, okay? So you don't need to worry if it is a 1 tail or 2 tail. Uh, I think p-value will tell you whether it's a one tail or two tail. It's impossible, right? 11, okay, what's wrong? Two plus four, oh, yeah, 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 my bad. Two plus four is six, six plus five, 11, yeah, yeah, 11, 11. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I just do the wrong calculation, it's 11. <laughs> Sorry about that. So should we add ranks or two groups set separately? Yes, we did. So this is a two, four, five rank, and this is the rank for the B. Uh, yeah. What is the sampling distribution of in the dubin watson test? Oh my God. A uh, sample distribution. I don't know, literally. Any, anywhere ask the sampling distribution in DW test, you don't need to know it, just know how to determine if it is, uh, if there is autocorrelation, that's enough, okay? But I can search on a uh, on Google, what is Dubin Watson test sampling distribution? Let's see. Dubin Watson test, Watson statistic. Okay, it seems like it doesn't state any like distribution of uh, the D statistic, okay? No, it, it's, no, sorry, it, it doesn't state any distributions. Uh, like the only thing should be the H statistic. So it's something like related to H and that H has some relationship to uh, T, but yeah, you don't need to know it. I'm sure you don't need to know it. Look, is there any other? Okay, should we add ranks for two groups separately? Yeah, so um, this is TA and this is TB. So if uh, it is a right-tailed test, this means the null hypothesis is um, what? The null hypothesis is, um, for example, uh, the two groups have, oh, uh, sorry, B is to the, oh, uh, sorry, the same location, right? Yeah, A and B has the same location. And alternative is A is to the right of B. So A is to the right of B. B. So in this case, if A is to the right of B, we better we, we should use T A. Okay, use T A to calculate that test the statistics. Okay. 
<clears throat> yeah, we should compare two T somehow, but you, uh, I, I hope you remember, like uh, that test statistic is by the T, um, do something with T A plus T B or something like that, like twelve or something. I can't remember exactly, but in the test statistic. Uh, we will consider all T A and T B, but if it is right held, uh, the 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 T we plug in is T A, okay. Danyang Li is asking, will will there be a lot of questions covering the first half semester materials? Well, I mean, many of students has already asked this question to me, and I can't say. Uh, anything about it because I don't know anything about the final exam. Okay, all materials is potentially examinable, but you know, uh, I don't know. Okay, any other questions? All right. Let's see if if the students has uh, yes, R square will be given to calculate VIF. Yeah. Let me uh refresh the ED and see if the student has uploaded the questions, just now. Um. No. Okay, I think we have we got a one question unsolved by one student, and I asked him to upload the question on ED, but definitely he didn't. All right. So any other questions? Any other questions? Okay. If no, you don't have any other questions. Then good luck to all of you for your final exam. Okay, uh, statistics is very important for for not only this unit but all your all the your future studies. Okay, we have. I solved many remaining questions in week thirteen. I really appreciate it. your voice. Sounds sort of funny. Get some rest. Take care. Thank you. Y H, yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay, so um, yeah, thank you. Um, also, uh, w what did I say? Okay, I I can't remember anything. Anyway, I'll have my dinner dinner now. So if you have more, more units, uh, regarding Cuba's units, you're very welcome to select them, and all of our staffs are very are very kind and helpful. Uh, so not only me, but also they are very helpful. And generally, Cuba's marks will be higher than accounting, definitely. So if you want to get a high GPA, you choose our Cuba's or finance or whatever. Okay. All right. Thanks for your cooperation for the whole semester. And I wish to see you, uh, around campus next semester. But I will never. I don't want to see you next semester in my class. Okay, <laughs> all right. Wish everyone, um, <clears throat> wish everyone pass the exam or get HD or full mark in your final exam. Thank you very much. And that's all for today's consultation. And you will see the recording. If you you you're walking halfway through the the consultation, you can watch the recordings. Uh, back like four four hours ago or whatever. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much and uh, good night, everyone, and good luck to your exam.